Okay. Hooray. Got that fixed. Okay, we're tonight we're going to play a game called The Quiet Year. Um, we were supposed to play Dungeon World, but we were short a player, so now we're going to play this instead. Um, the Quiet Year is a map game about community and struggle. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool game. Um, it's made by an independent company called what are they called? Um, I can't remember what they're called, but I'll, oh, Buried Without Ceremony. That's the name of the company. All right. So nobody has played this before except for me. I'm going to explain the rules. So anybody that happens to be watching this later on YouTube or if you're watching on Twitch right now, which I know you're not because there's only two people watching, um, then you can follow along and you can totally figure out how to play the game. Um, I'm just going to read some of these parts because it basically tells you to do that right at the beginning. Um, what this is. This is a map drawing game. You collectively explore the struggles of a community trying to rebuild after the collapse of civilization. It's a game about community, difficult choices, and landscapes. When you play, you make decisions about the community, decisions that get recorded on a map that is constantly evolving. Parts of the map are literal cartography, while other parts are symbolic. Players work together to create and steer this community, but they also play devil's advocate and introduce problems and tensions into the game. Um, we have, basically all you really need is a piece of paper and a pen, which in this case we're going to use uh, the roll 20. And then you have a deck of cards. You can actually use a regular deck of cards, but I have the like special deck of cards that comes with the game. Fancy. Yeah, if you use a regular deck of cards, you have to like have a copy of the sort of like the actions on the cards, and then you would draw it and say like, "Oh, seven hearts. What's that mean?" And then you'd have to look it up. But we don't have to do that. When we draw the seven of hearts, it tells you right there on the front. Well, lucky us. Yes. Fucking a. All right. Uh, a full-length game tends to run three to four hours, including teaching time. Um, we have opted to play the shorter game, so we've removed four cards from each season. Um, let's see. Alright, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to... Let's see, let me read this first. This is the opening story. For a long time, we were at war with the Jackals. Now, finally, we've driven them off, and we're left with this, a year of relative peace. One quiet year with which to build our community up and learn again how to work together. Come winter, the Frost Shepherds will arrive, and we might not survive that encounter. This is when the game will end. But we don't know about that yet. What we know is that right now, in this moment, there is an opportunity to build something. Um, first, we're going to familiarize ourselves with our tools. Uh, the blank page, which is on roll 20 right here. This is our map. Before playing, we'll establish, establish some of the landscape. As we play, we'll update the map to reflect new discoveries, conflicts, and opportunities. Parts of the map will be literal cartography, and other parts will be symbolic. We'll try to avoid writing words on it, though common symbols are fine. Throughout the game, we'll all be responsible for drawing on the map. It's fine to draw poorly or crudely, but all of us are going to draw. Normally, you would use project dice, which uh, would be like six-sided dice, and they're not actually for rolling, they're just symbolic. So if you start a project that takes four weeks, you put it at four, and then every time a week passes, you would tick, um, you would tick off a week on the project dice. So... We're not going to be able to do that since we're playing online, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to open like a little text document. You could do the initiative order and just every round take one off. Hmm. 
Yeah, but then I would need I would need to have tokens. No, you don't. You can just add. Oh, you can. Yes. Okay, so I could add like let's try this out for for fun. So I could add build a bridge. Oh, I can add build a bridge, and then I can just put four weeks. Okay, that works. Perfect. All right, so this will be the turn order will serve as our like keeping track of projects that we're doing. Yay! Yay! That's kind of cool. a good idea. I like that. Um, let's see. So, okay, so there are these things called contempt tokens. Um, maybe Rod, you have another brilliant idea on how we can do this. Um, basically, these tokens represent any tension and frustration that might arise in the community. Um, essentially, the way it works is that we're not really allowed to communicate. Like, when it's my turn, I'm not allowed to, like, ask you guys, like, how do you feel if I do this? Or what do you think about that? Like, I'm supposed to just do what I think's best. And if you don't agree with what I'm doing, then you're allowed to take a contempt token, which I'll explain what that means in a bit. So, um, is it something that's placed on the board, or is it something that you would have uh, in front of you? Normally it's something that you would just have in front of you, and you, you, you reserve the right to use it. We can use middle fingers. I would get a, 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 sword, to a sword token, or cross swords, and give each, make three of them. And give each person access just just one. That way, we can put it at the bottom of our screen and then move it up if we have a if we're going to activate it. All right, I'll just wait and see. Like, what, if it happens, I'll just drag it. I'll find a token and I'll drag it onto the screen somehow. Okay. Um. Okay. Can you turn your mic down a little bit, Rod? I think you're a little louder than than James. If I is. move it up, is that better? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay, there's a summary card, which is basically like a reminder of what you can do. And I don't have one, but um, I don't know why they didn't give me one. Okay, so in the deck, there's four suits. Uh, spring is represented by the hearts, summer by the diamonds, autumn by the clubs, and winter by the spades. Um there's one card it's the king of spades and essentially it's it, it's in the winter pile so once we get to winter as soon as we draw the king of spades the game is over so we'll get through the spring the the summer and autumn we'll play all those cards but once we get to the winter the game is over as soon as we draw the king of spades that means that the what are they called Frost, the, shepherd, the frost, things. the frost shepherds have arrived. If we draw that card, so I've, sh I've shuffled all the cards. I've got the deck sitting on on my desk here. Um, let's see. We have two roles to play in this game. The first is to represent the community at a bird's eye level, and to care about its fate. The second is to dispassionately introduce dilemmas as scientists conducting an experiment. The quiet quiet year asks us to move in and out of these two roles. We don't embody specific characters nor act out scenes. Instead, we represent currents of thought within the community. When we speak or take action, we might be representing a single person or a great many. If we allow ourselves to care about the fate of these people, the quiet year becomes a richer experience and serves as a lens for understanding communities and conflict. We'll also be presented with opportunities to introduce new issues for the community to deal with. This will often happen when we draw cards or use the Discover Something new action. By dispassionately introducing dilemmas and then returning to our other role as representatives of the community, we create tension and make the community's successes feel real. If there's an issue you struggle with in real life, like whether violence is ever justified, introduce situations that call that into question. Okay, before the, uh, this is uh, sketching the terrain. Before the games begin, the game begins, we must establish some facts about the community and what its surroundings are like. We begin with a brief discussion 
which we'll do now, that takes two minutes at most of the general terrain and habitat of the area. This can be as simple as someone saying, how about a community in a rocky desert? And everyone else saying, sure. At this point, each of us should introduce one detail about the local terrain. When we introduce our detail, we'll then sketch our contribution onto the map. These sketches should be rough and simple, leaving lots of blank space for additions during play. The community itself should be fairly large on the map, perhaps occupying a third of the sheet. Unless stated otherwise, assume that our community has 60 to 80 members. As an example, a group might decide to set their game in a forest. The first player introduces the detail. All right, the forest is full of young, spindly trees. The next player adds, and it's nestled within a steep mountain range. The third player adds, we've taken up residence in an old mining camp. The final player says, and the trees in this area have all been clear cut. As details are added, players draw them on the maps. All right. So let's figure out what our terrain looks like. Keep in mind, this could be anything. It could be an island, it could be mountains, it could be space. Do we need a continent first? No, I mean, it's we're only going to sketch the area where our community is. So, like, um, for example, if we were on the north side of a lake that's nestled in the mountains, surrounded by forest, then we would just draw you know the lake with the community a little bit like the marking the community and then that's it i say there's a jungle on the west side of our territory okay a jungle to the west yes all right uh what about the terrain that the community's built on is it in the jungle or is it just outside the jungle or maybe it's in the trees Are we living in tree houses? Um, what do you think? I think that sounds kind of cool. A, what? Go ahead. What about like on a delta, like beside the jungle? Okay. You know, something like uh, the Amazon basin or something. Okay, so there's a, a delta, which would be like that's like a river that opens up into. Like a bigger body of water? Is that is that that's what that's what a delta is, right? Yeah, a lot of it sounds like it, like a lot of silt or something. Think like uh, the lower part of Mississippi. Gotcha. Okay, so there's a delta. There's jungles to the west. Um, what's to the east? Rolling plains. Rolling plains. And then on the very east is a desert. We hit them all. That seems pretty. Oh, yeah. So it's going from jungle to base to delta to plains to desert. I think that's that might be a little. I think a little. The community is supposed to take up a third of the map. So imagine that, however big a community of sixty to eighty people is, the whole map is only three times that. So that would probably be. No, it's a, only like. 60 to 80 p. okay that would be a little dramatic to have like that yeah. range of of terrain so i i'm gonna say that i'm gonna draw the um i'm gonna draw the delta so we'll say that this river comes down and it kind of opens up into like maybe like a swamp or something that's about right okay so we have this river then down here we have swamp. Oh god, this is kind of looking like a penis. <laughs> when you put the jungle over here on the left. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, we probably don't need that. You know, that, that didn't help. <laughs> we understand water is there. And then, um, so it looks like we're going to have some... Looks like we've got jungle over here. So where you made all these squiggly lines in a whirlpool is a marsh? Yeah, that's Swamp? supposed to be the marsh. Let me do okay. some green too. Alright, so should there be more jungle to the on the other side? Or this is I guess our settlement is here, so we'll We'll note that. We'll put, um, 
put some buildings here. So we'll say that we're like set up here. I don't know if we've got like tents or if we're in, we haven't figured that out yet. Is that something we gotta like draw for? Or? Yeah, we're gonna talk about that right now. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. My marshy grass yeah. symbol. <laughs> oh, see, that's really good. That's way better than mine. I'm gonna actually delete mine because that's like, or at least some of mine, because you just like killed it. I should have just let you draw in the first place. All right, there we go. Good marshy grass. Okay, so now we need to declare an important resource for the community, something which we what? might have in abundance or scarcity. Why, with the so, jungle right there, I would figure we would have a bunch of wood. Okay, so we'll put, let's see, how can I do this? Oh, we, I can just use the text thing. Text. So we'll put this over here. I should probably make that bigger. You wrote text? All right, resources. Okay. Okay, so what's something that we have in abundance? You said wood, right? Lumber. I would think so. Lumber. So we'll put lumber plus, which means that we have it in abundance. Um, let's see how many we should choose. We can also make up new stuff. Like you could be like, oh, there's this right here. So we have an abundance of that. Like it doesn't have to be obvious. Um, Okay, now let's think of two scarcities. Clean water. Okay. Because, I mean, you know, Mars and shit, you got nematodes and all that other good shit in your water. Okay. Um, what else? We have no corn. No corn? Do we need corn? No is corn. It, is it like, so food maybe? Are we short on food? Sounds like- I was going specifically corn. I wasn't oh. going food. Well, what, you can't survive without corn? Well, you got tortillas. Corn is both for eating and for liquor. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'll just put food and then in parentheses, corn. Let's see, um, what else? Let's, um... Only a third of the population is female, so that way we have trouble continuing the ra our race. Okay, so... Women. I guess if we want to be called about it, breeding stuff. <laughs> I wasn't gonna use that term! I'll just put, I'll just put women. There go. All right. Uh, I think that's probably a good start to resources. We've got a lot of lumber. We don't have very much clean water or food or women. Um, but we have plenty of fish. Well, we live right on a river. You got, you gave us three negatives. We should at least have two positives. No, we're only going to do one abundance. So what do you think? Is it is it lumber or is it fish? Maybe there's a reason why the fish, like maybe 
Maybe they're polluted by toxic waste from the war. Well, we just said that the water's not very clean, so maybe the fish aren't very clean either. Yeah. Maybe some people got sick from eating the fish. Could probably make that a little bigger, eh? Oh, oh there they are. Look at you go. Okay. Um... Let's see, so we got that now. Basically, now I'm just going to explain to you like the mechanics of how it works. Uh, the basic unit of play is a week. Each week is a turn taken by one player. So your turn is one week. Uh, play proceeds clockwise, so what we'll do is I'll start, and then we'll just go in order of the cameras. We'll go me, then Rod, then James. Um, when it's your turn, you draw a card, uh, read the text, which I'll have to, I'll have to do that for you, and then you'll need to select, like, basically each card has, usually it has two options. So I'll read the card to you, and you can, you just pick one, and then follow what it says. Um, during the turn, any project dice are reduced by one, which will be our turn order. And then finished projects are updated on the map. And then the player whose turn it is can take one action. They can either discover something new, hold a discussion, or start a project. Um, if a, uh, one thing to note, if a card asks you a question, think about whether your answer could be represented on the map somehow. If it fits, update the map to reflect this new information. For example, if the card asks you about the sleeping quarters for the community, you might end up drawing a row of tents near the edge of the forest. All right. Uh, projects. Unless your card specifically told you otherwise, in bold text, um, the next stop step is to reduce each project die on the map by one. Once a project reaches zero, the die gets removed and the project is completed. Whoever started the project gets to tell everyone how it turns out and update the map to reflect its completion. If a project finishes early, because a card says that it finishes early, it is instead the responsibility of the active player to tell everyone how it turns out and to update the map. If your card's bold text had you place a project die on the map just a moment ago, the die doesn't reduce during the week, it's just now getting underway. Um, when a project gets completed, it is assumed that it went successfully and is beneficial to the community. In some cases, it might make sense to have an investigative project end with a hope dispelled. Even in these cases, the completion of a project could always feel like a step forward, not backward. Should always feel like a step forward. This doesn't always mean that the whole community is happy with the results, though. Okay. When you discover something new... Um, you would introduce a new situation. It might be a problem. One second. Okay. You can. What's up? Yeah. I just want to stars. Okay. Don't know where it was. I'm trying to figure out how to. Yep. Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> locked off the bottom half of the stream. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shut up. No, it's okay. Somehow I just like he's breaking room. Destroy the stream again. Stream. Why did it do that? Neat. Let me try to change the scene real quick and then change back. There we go. Okay, so yeah, when you discover something new, you introduce a new situation. It might be a problem, an opportunity, or a bit of both. Draw the situation on the map. Drawing should be small and simple, smaller than an inch, finished within 30 seconds. When everything seems too controlled or easy, we can use this action to introduce new issues and dilemmas. Okay, some examples of discovering something new. There's a dried up well located at the edge of town. 
Mangy wolves have been slinking around the woods. There's a broken down water wheel a mile upstream. Strange wailing noises coming from the forest at night. A self-declared prophet arrives. All right, we're almost done, guys. Hold on. Hold a discussion. Um, another action you can do is hold a discussion. You can choose to open with a question or a declaration, starting with you and going clockwise. Everyone gets to weigh in once, sharing a single argument comprised of one to two sentences. If you open with a question, you get to weigh in last. If you open with a declaration, that's it. A discussion never results in a decision or summation process. Everyone weighs in and then it's over. This is how conversations work in communities. They are untidy and inconclusive affairs. Each discussion... Um, no, it did the thing again. Why is it doing that? And now, uh, okay. Each discussion should be tied to a situation on the map. When a discussion ends, mark the situation it is attached to with a small dot. Some sample conversations include, should we retaliate against the bikers? Or, if leading with a declaration, we should abstain from retaliation or violence. Another example would be, could we use the school bus as a sleeping area for the village children? It's important that we stay concise. If any of us feel like we have more to say on a topic, we can always hold another discussion later. All right, and the last action you can do is start a project. You choose a situation and declare what the community will do to resolve it. There's no consultation about the idea. The, the community simply begins work. Example projects. Converting the mine shaft into a cold food storage. We're killing those wolves. We're going to sacrifice a newborn on the night of the full moon to appease the windwalkers. That's my personal favorite. Okay, and as a group, we quickly decide how many weeks the project would reasonably take to complete. Minimum one, maximum six. Remember, you are a small community. It isn't easy or quick to build a house or repair a water wheel. Do you have the necessary tools and expertise to do this? Be generous with your assumptions, but do remember that scarcity and difficulty are the norm. If a project would reasonably take longer than six weeks to complete, it will need to be completed in stages. And so we already discussed how we're going to show that. And as we go, we will update our resources. So it may be that a project we finish um, might make a scarcity no longer a scarcity, or it might make it an abundance. So we'll update that. Um, let's see. Discovering something new. Let's us introduce new situations and dilemmas. Hold a discussion. Let's us all talk about the state of the community. Start a project. Let's us solve our problems and grow. By respecting this division of purpose, we make sure each week involves making important decisions. It's important we respect the purpose and balance of these three actions. We shouldn't use discover something new to skirt our problems by conveniently encountering supplies we lack. We shouldn't hold a discussion about situations we haven't mentioned or introduced yet. Um, con contempt is the tokens I was talking about. If you ever feel like you weren't consulted or honored in the decision-making process, you can take a piece of contempt and place it in front of you. This is your outlet for expressing disagreement or tension. If someone starts a project you don't agree with, you don't get to voice your objections or speak out of turn. Instead, invited to take a piece of contempt. Contempt will generally remain in front of the players until the end of the game. It will act as a reminder of past contentions. Its primary role is as a social signifier. In addition, you can discard it back into the center of the table in two ways. By either doing an act that is selfish, no, by acting selfishly, or by diffusing attention. If you ever want to act selfishly to the known detriment of the community, you can discard a contempt token to justify your behavior. You decide whether your behavior requires justification. This will often trigger others taking contempt tokens in response. If someone else does something that you greatly support that would mend relationships and rebuild trust, you can discard a contempt token to demonstrate how they have diffused past tensions. Uh -huh. Alright, I think that that's probably good enough for now. Alright, so I'm going to draw the first card. Okay, um, let's 
see. All right, so the question that I'm going to do is, what natural predators roam this area? Are you safe? I'm going to say that since we are in the jungle, um, I'm going to say that there's jungle, like, kind of like all over here. Like we're kind of like in the middle of the jungle. Um, there are there's a tri like a tr a family of gorillas, and since we're like in their territory, they sort of like feel threatened by us and have been sort of violent towards us in the past. Damn gorillas. You damn dirty apes. Yes, that's my gorilla. <laughs> he has no oh, arms. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Kinda looks like E.T. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> it's like the Atari. Okay, um, so for my turn, I am going to start a project. And my project is going to be that uh, we're going to try to set up an area of the camp where we can keep fires going constantly because we're going to boil a lot of water so that we can maintain some clean water so I think the amount of water we need to boil for 60 to 80 people is probably a lot so how many weeks do you think it would take maybe like two three I'd say three at the most three all right we'll go with three Okay, so I'm going to draw, like, maybe, like, over here, I got these, like, pots of water. Fuck you. supposed to be like steam <laughs> all, right. all right so that's the end of my turn um, Rod it's your turn I'm gonna read you your card uh, you have two options one is that an old man confesses to past crimes and atrocities what has he done the other option is a young boy starts digging in the ground and discovers something unexpected what is it I'm gonna say that old old man Jeremy confessed to giving tactical secrets to the jackals because they held his daughter prisoner. Okay. Draw that on the map somehow. Wait, you say old man Jenkins? No, Jeremy. Oh, uh, my bad. My bad. Don't know how you would draw a spy. Maybe like a stick finger holding up his like middle finger or something because it's like fucking the community. Or I can draw some jail bars. But sure, yeah. To signify his daughter. Yeah, do that. As long as it's, it just has to be symbolic. 
at least like good enough for us to to know what it means. Maybe put like a what little. Are the bad Maybe put like a little stick figure dude in there. You really want me to get fancy a stick figure dude? This is his daughter, we'll make her a redhead. <laughs> okay, the redhead's in jail. Okay. Alright, so what do you want to do for your action? You can either discover something new, hold a discussion, or begin a project. I am going to begin a project. Okay. I think that we need to build a bridge across the river to get to the other side. Okay. So, how long do you think that'll take? I think that we could do that in two weeks. Wow, you think we can build a bridge have, we, in two weeks? It doesn't have to be real fancy. It just has to be something to get across the other side. I was going to say four. What do you think, James? We can split the difference. All right, so we'll they say get, uh, three. three. And I thought you weren't supposed to draw the picture until the project was complete. Yeah, you're not. I... I screwed that one up. Here. Rookies. Watch this. <laughs> Just cut it. That way you can repaste it. Oh, I was going to put it in the GM layer so nobody can see it. Oh, okay. Well, that won't work, though. Nah, I'll no. just leave it. It's easier. All right, so the boiling water stations are now reduced to two. All right, James, it's your turn. Um, you have two choices. Are there children in the community? If there are, what is their role in the community? Or, how old are the eldest members of the community? What special needs do they have? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to go with the uh, children one and... Uh, I don't know, I would imagine children would basically just aid their parents and, you know, whatever tasks they do. You know, say if, uh, you know, the farmer has like two or three kids, those kids are working out in the field. If, uh, you know, the guy who, like, uh, finds scrap goes out and helps find and sort scrap and shit. Okay, so the children in the community, they assist us in finding scrap. So they go like they're scavengers. Is that what you're trying to say? Does that sound about right? Uh, it's really, it's just like more of whatever their parental guardian figures do. Okay, how are you going to draw that on the map? <laughs> yeah, I guess just put a little, couple little stick figures representing youngins. All right, can you can you draw it, or do you want me to draw it? I got it. All right. All right, there's the youngins. All right, and yep. what action would you like to do for your turn? You can start a project, hold a discussion, or discover something new. Uh, 
I guess let's hold a discussion about the uh, elephant in the room, or should I say gorilla? And that discussion will be gorillas. Can we eat them or appease them? I don't think we can appease them. Um, I also... I'm not sure that we could... Yeah, we could eat them. Why not? <laughs> Rod. One Kill them! <laughs> Alright, so you get one more... Kill them and eat them! Alright, so you can say one more thing, James. Let's still eat us a gorilla, man. Yum. Nom nom. <laughs> Alright, so the boiling stations go down to one, and the bridge goes down to two. Yes, we've got a bridge. Alright, my turn. Okay, an old piece of machinery is discovered, cursed and dangerous. How does the community destroy it? Okay. I think that when shortly after like the 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 guy admitted that he was like providing information to the jackals, we discovered oh, my, hear me? Yeah. Um we discovered that he had like a little setup in his his room. It was like a like an old CB radio and a and a battery that it was hooked up to. And um, so yeah, we we took it and we threw it in the river. We had kept the battery because we thought maybe we could use it for something, but uh, we threw the CB into the river. How was it cursed? What was wrong with it? Well, because the guy was using it to give away information. Gotcha. So we're worried that... I don't know, we're, we don't want to send out any signals so that the, the jackals know where we are. We are also a cowardly and superstitious lot. Yeah. Are we? Damn. <laughs> right um, targets for Batman. So I'm going to introduce something new. Um, during the night, there was a guerrilla attack on one of our uh, shelters. Uh, one of the shelters was badly damaged. The the roof was was like bashed in. Uh, several people were killed. Um, and. Let's see. So now we're actually. Oh, how do I click in there? It's got to be possible. Right? There we go. So now we're missing some shelter. as well. And I'm going to draw uh, House. All right, so the boiling station is completed. The bridge is at one. Um, so I think that means that we're now we're now good on clean water. Bitching. Now we just have to find some and we can distill. <laughs> All right, so Rod. Okay, two options. What group has the highest status in the community? 
What must people do to gain inclusion in this group? Or, are there distinct family units in the community? If so, what family structures are common? I think that we'll go with the first one. And... The medical profession holds the highest esteem in the community because at the end of the war there were so many dying and sick that they kind of stepped forward and took over. And the people kind of flocked to them because they were, you know, saving them. Okay, so maybe people who, like, in their previous lives, they, they were like... Nurses, doctors, some somebody caregivers of some sort. Okay. The, we 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 had too many, too long of war, and so they kind of got away from the military type people. Gotcha. Okay, draw that on the map somehow. My medical cross doesn't look very well. I like it. Alright, and what action would you like to take this turn? I'm going to open up a discussion. And I suggest that once the bridge is built, we move to the other side of the river away from the guerrilla attacks, and that way we can use the river as a barrier. Okay, James, what do you think about that? Moving to the other side of the river would mean we would have to make a clearing over there and uh, move all of our shit over there across our, you know, sort of cobbled together bridge. So I think a better idea would be like pits, trap them motherfuckers. All right, and I'll say. We don't know if there might be more. There might be another gorilla tribe on the other side. Someone should investigate first. Okay, Rod, you got. Did you? Yours was a declaration, or was it a question? Mine was a declaration. All right, so that's it. You don't. You don't get any. Yeah, else. but my bridge is built. Yeah, that's right. Draw your bridge. There's my bridge. That is a damn good bridge, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I try. Okay. Um, so that's... Okay. James' turn. James' turn. Um, here's your choices. There's another community somewhere on the map. Where are they? what sets them apart from you or what belief or practice helps to unify your community hmm. that's a toughie uh... you know what let's go with that first one since we got the bridge built and uh... they're kind of like here on the other side of the uh, delta. Okay, draw it on the map. Yeah. 
And what was the other part of that question? There's a com there's another community somewhere on the map. Uh, where are they? Which you just drew. And what sets them apart from you? They are defectors from the jackals. Okay. All right. And what would you like to do with your action this turn? I'm going to start a project. And on the outskirts of the village, we're going to dig several very large pits, put spikes in the bottom of them, and put stuff over them so the gorillas will fall in them if they try to get us again. That way we can harvest their tasty, tasty gorilla flesh. Mm. Does it taste like chicken? Or something. Alright, how many weeks is that going to take? Given the size and number, I'm going to go four. Okay, and how would you, what would you like to, oh no, that's what you just did, okay. Yeah. So that's good for you, it's my turn. <coughs> mm. Someone new arrives, who? So, I'm going to say that a family arrives and they claim that they came from the north and that there is like a group of people in the north who are just like basically like raping and pillaging everything that they find so they're sort of like refugees they're they're just like the settlement that they were staying with was destroyed by these people and they just fled and they followed the the river to the delta I'm going to say it's a good symbol for a refugee. We'll just show that the f there's a family. Jeez. Okay. We lose a week from the spike picks. Yes. All right, so I'm going to start a project. Um, we're going to send a team across the bridge, and although we are aware that there is the group of jackals that are down here we're gonna send them they were defected the jackals oh they're defected from the jackals okay well we're gonna try to avoid them what we're doing is we're sending out a search party to sort of go check out the jungle and see if the gorilla problem is or if there's any other predators over there that we would have to worry about other than you know 
the danger of the other community. So I'm going to draw a search party. So I'm going to draw like a pair of binoculars. Ooh. That is a really shitty pair of binoculars. And I think that would take... I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say that's only gonna take like a week. What do you think? Well, it depends on how far you wanna go in and explore, so... Okay. Yeah. Since it's the initial probe, it probably... You can tell him be, go for a week and come back. All right. Well, we'll say two weeks so we can make sure that they. All right. So the spike pits goes down to two. And man, those binoculars are just awful. Would you like to redraw them? No, it's fine. All right, Rod. A charismatic young girl convinces many to help her with an elaborate scheme. What is it? Who joins her endeavors? Start a project to reflect. Or, a charismatic young girl tries to tempt many into sinful or dangerous activity. Why does she do this? How does the community respond? Huh. I'm going to say that this girl is... Um, an orphan from the war and she has no family to fall upon to help her so she convinces the other girls of her age which will make her legal like 18, 19 wait so is this the first one or the second one I don't know where it falls under. Okay, okay <laughs> <'Cause... I'm just laughs> trying to... uh, she decides to open a brothel Okay. A little, little, and I guess at first nobody really notice notices, so to speak. So their initial reaction is probably nothing. But uh, I'd say as their time goes on, then they find out they're accepting of it. Okay. Um, I would say. Okay, I would say that's, is that sinful or dangerous activity? I mean, that's kind of depends on your Well, it depends on your moral codes. I mean, sinful, I mean. I would say, on... I would say it's more the first one. A charismatic young girl convinces many to help her with an elaborate scheme. What is it, which you just described, a brothel? Who joins her endeavors? Start a project to reflect. So what project would you start to reflect Keep in She's gonna mind, need a house. Well, we're sh keep in mind we're short on women too. So I know. Who said they weren't married too? I think I'm drawing the signs upside down, but <laughs> so they're trying to build a, a a place. She she yeah they're gonna have this little house, and right now it's only like two or three girls. And they're just trying to make it by because they have no other skills and no other family to fall upon. So are they? So they've gone to the age-old tradition of prostitution. So it sounds like they're probably just like bartering for like supplies and stuff. Right. All right. So we'll say a brothel is being established. How many weeks for the brothel? Oh, we're building a house. That's probably at least four. I would say. I was going to say five. Well, we can't... Was it one to six? Is that what it was? Six, yeah. All right, so we'll go five. I mean, you got a few elderly teenage girls, early 20s, trying to build a house. I mean, I don't see that going really quick. Yeah, okay. All right, what's your action? My, I, I'd like to uh, bring another discussion. I think these refugees from the north should be kept under... Watch until it can be determined that they're not spies or lying. 
James? If they're spies, they would make good gorilla bait. I agree, but I think that we should. Um, I think we should take the women, like into our own. I think we should like watch the men and then take the women. Yeah, they're all at the brothel. Oh, sorry. I'm not allowed to speak again. All right. So was your? I, I, I keep forgetting. Was that a question or a declaration? That was a declaration. Declaration. I didn't say what I thought we should. I told. I said what we. Sh what I thought we should do. Gotcha. All right, James. Uh, this okay. Is, FYI, this is the last week of spring. What important and basic tools does the community lack? Or, where are you storing your food? Why is this a risky place to store things? We are storing our food in an impromptu silo and uh, this is risky because rodents and other you know scavengers and stuff can get to the food. Okay. Go ahead and draw that. I have no idea what that symbol is. It wanted to be like a chicken leg or something to represent food. I got it. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not any worse than the binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since we are now into summer, and just so you know, like things get progressively more like, uh, what would be the word? Wait, did I take my action? Oh, no, no, take your action. That's right. Let's see. How'd the discovery thing work again? Um, basically, when you discover something new, it should be something that sort of like introduces a challenge. Like, it, it's not. Discovering something new doesn't solve a problem. It usually creates a problem or like interjects like something interesting that like you know kind of changes the game a little bit. So like I introduced something new when I said that there was gorillas that attacked the the building and kill people like that was that was introducing something new could be a discovery okay. like it could could be something that we found it could be an, an, something that happened uh A week into uh, the jungle search party's investigation, <laughs> they find a cave that is full of uh, quick and easily burning bat guano and also rabid, not necessarily giant, but larger than normal bats. Okay. Um... All right, yeah, that makes sense because the jungle party, that's not like their their purpose was to find out if it was like safe from the gorillas and stuff, but we'll just say that separately they found that. They just kind of stumbled on it. Okay, so go ahead and draw that wherever that is. All right. I'm gonna since we're the next card is summer, so we're gonna take like a two three minute break. Just be right back. <laughs> 